Hey family, we are so glad that you're with us this morning to worship Jesus. My name is Ben. I'm one of the pastors here at 24 Church. And I always like to start with just talking about what we're about, uh, what our vision is for this church. And and here it is in a nutshell, is that we uh, are trying to be, with the Holy Spirit's help, uh, a gospel-centered family who's on mission. And we do that to lift high the name of Jesus and to be salt and light people right here in Pleasant View, Tennessee, where God has planted us. And so the three big words that you kind of hear in that definition are gospel, family, and mission. And we, if you think about that, that kind of encompasses a really broad spectrum of what the church is called to be. You know, we are gospel-centered people We are a family uh, and love each other like brothers and sisters, and we're a mission-sent people. And so we uh, continue in Jesus's mission uh, and want the world to know about him. And so we're we're embracing all those identities with the Holy Spirit's help and and trying to form disciples around those identities. Uh, And so that's just briefly kind of what we're about here. Uh, If you're a visitor, I want to say an extra special welcome. We are glad that you're with us. Uh, And also tell you how you can connect with us if you'd like to connect further. Uh, There's a button on our homepage if you go to 24church.com. It's a red button. It says, Let's Connect. And if you just click that, it's kind of a a digital online card. Same thing if you were gathering with us in person. uh, We'd give you a card to fill out if you wanted to, and you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, It's a digital version of that. And so uh, if you would like to let us know that you're here, if you have questions, if you have a prayer request, anything along those lines, we would love it if you'd fill out the card and give us your information. So again, just go to 24church.com. On that front page, it's a red button that says, Let's Connect. And if you fill that out, uh, that's the easiest way for us to get to know one another. Uh, We're going to worship today, and I want to pray for us, so join me in prayer as we do that. Uh, Father, we thank you for uh, another week uh, where you are still sovereign over the universe, where Jesus is still the Savior that we desperately need and want. Um, And we're in a place where our world seems like it's in continual turmoil. And so we come to you as a needy people. Uh, We desperately need you. Um, Father, I think I speak for all of us when we say we we need a fresh touch, a fresh experience of you this morning. And so, Lord, as we engage online, as we listen and worship, I pray that you would help us and uh, point us to truth and, uh, and meet with us here in this place. And so I ask all that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For less of glory, 
All right, I wanna talk about the Worth It initiative. Um, if you are new around here, you may not know about the Worth It initiative, but uh, a little over a year ago, so last April, so it's been April to April plus more months. I mean, it's, we've been in this thing for a while, but it's a giving initiative that 24 churches entered into uh, where we are investing even more deeply in gospel, family, and mission. And so it encompasses all our regular ministries, but it also encompasses some new things. And those new things are a building expansion uh, that we're currently right in the middle of and nearing the finish line on. We're getting very close. Um, and it encompasses some new ministries that we're also wanting to start in, you know, in the coming year. Uh, and so that's a, a drug and rehabilitation ministry. It's a, a bus ministry where we're going to be going to uh, other parts of town to try to help make it easier for people to attend church with us. Uh, uh, orphan and adoption care ministry, a new Mother's Day Out program that we're going to use some of this new space uh, to accomplish. Lots of just really exciting things that we think are going to help meet the needs of the community where God has placed us and just, you know, be Jesus's hands and feet to people. And so when you give to 24 Church, uh, every single dime goes to the Worth It initiative. It's the only fund we have. And so when you give, everything goes to the Worth It initiative. And so if, if that's jiving with your heart or maybe you're a committed member already, uh, I want to tell you how you can give to 24 Church and the Worth It initiative today. Uh, there are four ways that you can give. Um, the first one is that you can give online at 24church.com uh, slash give. And when you go there, uh, you can plug in your info. It's safe and secure. You can give that way. You can give via text message. And you see a number right there on the screen. Basically, just text any amount that you'd like to give to that number, and it, it'll take care of the rest. And you can give in that way. You can also use our app, uh, which is called the Church Center app. And you can download that from your app store, store of choice. Uh, and then once you're in there and have it downloaded, you connect to our church, 24 Church, uh, and you can give on the app, and that's super convenient as well. Uh, or if you just prefer to mail in a check, you can do that again to the address that you see on the screen, P.O. Box 230. Uh, and when you give in any of those four ways, again, it goes to uh, the Worth It initiative, and it all goes to the same place. Uh, Chris is about to preach for us, so I'm going to pray for him and for us. So join me in prayer. Let's pray together uh, and, and get ready to hear the Word of God. Let's do that. Father, I pray in these next few moments, uh, Lord, as we study your Word together, as Chris preaches and brings the Word, I pray that you would fill him uh, with your Spirit. I pray that you would help him to speak powerfully and boldly uh, and, and in a grace-filled way, uh, right to our hearts. And Lord, help us to receive whatever it is that we need to receive from you this morning and to hear you just speak so plainly and lovingly to us. And so, uh, Lord, fill him with your spirit and help him. And I pray for him right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, and I uh, want, uh, want to share with you uh, a message that uh, I've just spent some time like really struggling through even myself. Uh, what's this look like in my life and am I doing a good job of this? Uh, you know, I think for all of us, we desire, uh, you know, we desire and long for different things. And, uh, you know, we, we talk about this a lot that, you know, we worship and we're made to worship and God created us uh, that way. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's easy for those desires and those longings to, to become about other things, obviously, other than Him. Uh, but I think that I think that it'd be so healthy for us to look at the scripture that uh, I've I've been studying on. I want to share it with you. Uh, if you've got a Bible and you want to pull it out and uh, go there with me, it's out of First uh, Peter chapter two, um, and we see Peter sharing with us uh, some uh, some wisdom, some knowledge of just you know how important it is for us to to seek the Lord, but even kind of what that looks like and. And what happens uh, when we do that, and, and just how important it is. Uh, I'll just go ahead and start here in uh, verse one of First uh, Peter chapter two. It says this: It says, "So put away all malice, and all deceit, and hypocrisy, and envy, and all slander." Now that's that's you know a lot of big words thrown in there. Peter start passage off with here uh, you know and, and there's there's a lot to each of those words and we don't have the time for me to break all those down um, but at the end of the day what I see is sinful heart 
uh, you know, I see a sinful heart uh, coming through those things, and, and, and a sinful heart leads us a lot of times to those things, to malice, to deceit, to hypocrisy, uh, to envy, to slander. Uh, you know, we could, again, talk about each of those things, um, but Peter is trying to warn us uh, from falling into these things, and, and really I think what he's trying to help us with is he's trying to help us with having the right heart. Uh, and so in verse 2, he gives us like something that we can actually act on. And he says this, it says, Like newborn infants long for the, for the pure spiritual milk, uh, that by it you may grow up into salvation. Now verse 2, Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. Now we understand something about babies. Uh, we've had a few babies along the way, and I've learned a lot about babies over the years, more so than I probably thought I ever would. And uh, my wife is who I consider to be an expert on babies because she has had seven of them, uh, and she has nursed those babies, and, and I, I can tell you, that that has not been easy for her. Uh, I won't even get into all the stories, but we've had some that really fought against it. She worked really hard, worked with other people, uh, had people that were experts at that kind of stuff helping. All these things, it, it's never, it's never hardly ever been an easy thing for her to nurse any of our children. And in fact, uh, our last child, Daisy, uh, did not want to nurse at all. Um, and she was so determined that uh, my wife pumped. Uh, and she had pumped with a lot of the children uh, for you know a specific period of time to like get them to where they were better at nursing or whatever it is. Um, and then uh, with Daisy, uh, she never, ever, ever wanted to nurse, like really struggled with it. And that was very hard uh, for Aaron. And um, anyway, uh, she ended up pumping for an entire year and feeding her uh, you know, that way for an entire year. That's hard. Uh, you know, anybody, anybody that's been a nursing mom could tell you, uh, or lived in the house with one could tell you, uh, that's not easy to do. And you're having the time, the pumping and all these things. And there's a lot to that, uh, that basically dictates all of life going on at that period of time. And you're carrying a pump with you if you go anywhere and all these, all these crazy things. Well, uh, the purpose in that is we understand that uh, an infant baby really does uh, like the best, as God intended them to do, so to speak, uh, really with their mother's milk. Now, a lot of people can't do that, and that's that's not a knock on anybody that struggles with that uh, at all. Um, but it's it's just this understanding, you know, that we know that it's really good for them, and it helps them. It helps them to grow, and and here. Peter is using this analogy. He's saying, like newborn infants, he's saying, if he's saying, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. And so Peter's helping us to see something that I think is so important for us. Um, you know, like newborn infants, long for those words, long for. You know, bring about what I was talking about just a few minutes ago, and that we desire different things in this world, and sometimes uh, we desire the wrong things. Sometimes we long for the wrong things. Peter's saying, "Long for pure spiritual milk." He's saying, and he's not saying you should be like an infant your whole Christian walk, your whole Christian life. No, he's just saying, "Long for what is good for you, that by it you may grow up." into salvation. And that's a, that's, a, that's a statement where Peter is helping us to see that we are constantly growing in our salvation. We call this sanctification. That's a big word, uh, but that is, that is this constant growing, uh, growing up in the Lord, growing closer to the Lord and all those things. Uh, and, and that's what Peter is calling us and he's encouraging us to. He's saying, don't, you know, he's saying, put away these things, the malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. Get that stuff out of here. Pay attention to your life. Pay attention to your heart. Pay attention to the sin that is in your heart that is causing outward things to happen and be like a newborn infant and long for something different. Quit longing for anger and malice and wanting to uh, you know, get into it or with people or you know, whatever it is, but long for the pure spiritual milk that is 
uh, that by it you may grow up into salvation. Now this is uh, this is a great statement, and in verse verse three he follows it with with this even better statement. He says it says if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. He's saying if you have longed for the things of the Lord, the things of God, and you've experienced Him and you know Him, then you have tasted that the Lord is good. He's kind of continuing that analogy with the tasted part of this, you know, going back to the long for pure spiritual milk. Uh, He's saying, you know, long for the things of God. uh, And if you have and you have tasted, then you know that the Lord is good. And that's, I mean, uh, to us that are believers and we've, you know, walked with the Lord for any length of time, most of us probably know that. But I, I, I'm afraid for some believers, they really don't know how good the Lord really is sometimes because maybe, maybe they're still playing both sides of the fence. They're longing for the things of this world and then they long for the things of God. But, you know, they, they kind of they play both. And man, it, is, it, is it not hard to do that? I mean, let's just face it. It's not an easy thing uh, for us to, to give up the things of this world and just long for the Lord. But, but Peter is saying, don't fall into that trap. Long for the things of the Lord. If indeed, if you have, you have tasted that the Lord is good. And in verse 4, he keeps going. He says, As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That's There's a lot right there. Verse 4, let's start back there. As you come to him, so it's starting off with this we are called to come to the Lord, go to the Lord, go to God. We're called to seek Him out, okay? So there's there's something on us here. It's not just, you know, well, the Lord will lead me if He decides. No, we, we need to seek the Lord, and in seeking the Lord and spending time with Him, He will lead us uh, if we give Him the chance. Uh, as you come to Him, again, showing us that there's a response in our life toward the Lord, seeking Him out to have a relationship, a living stone by uh, rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. Now, it's referring to us as a, as a living stone rejected by men, and it's, it, it is talking about us here, uh, but it's talking about us in such a way that we understand that a lot of times that the people of this world will reject us. They will reject the gospel. Um, but in the sight of God, that we are chosen and precious. And in verse 5, that you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. So it's using this analogy of stones, that we are like living stones, and we are being built up into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, it says, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. We'll keep going here in just a minute uh, with uh, the rest of the passage. But, you know, right there, there's this there's this understanding that God is, is wanting to do something in us and use us. Um, and and He does so in the likes of, of how this is framed. Uh, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up. One of the things that I think that we all can agree upon is that we want to grow. We want to grow in life. Uh, we want to grow in our walk with the Lord. And, um, you know, it, it's easy to long for the things of this world, and we can grow those things, uh, or we can long for the Lord Himself, and in seeking Him, we can grow in Him. Living stones. This is a this is an interesting this is an interesting use of language, you know, and 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 the idea that uh, that it's something uh, that is a stone, but that it also so that it's worth using for building, uh, but it's also living. Just this week at uh, the church building, we have seen uh, steps go in outside. Been exciting, you know. We've seen uh, some more of the swing set go in, you know. Exciting, you know. Everybody's excited. I'm excited. It all looks great, you know. So 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 awesome to get to see all that. Uh, and then at the same time, 
uh, you know, I think for us, as we see those additions being made, I think if we're really honest about ourselves in our spiritual walk and we were asking ourselves, how am I growing in my walk with the Lord? A lot of times uh, we probably would say, well, I don't know that I really am. And I think that really comes down to what Peter is trying to help us with in this passage, is that a lot of times we have let ourselves be distracted by the world, it's so easy to do, and not be focused on the things of the Lord. Because if you have tasted, then you know that the Lord is good. You know, we, we, we have that understanding, uh, but the truth is, is that we still veer off and see a shiny thing and we're, you know, squirrel, whatever, we're gone. Um, and so Peter's trying to use this analogy to help us to see something that's so good for us. And he goes further with the stones thing in just a minute. We're going to see that. So stones are used for building. We know that, right? But these are living stones. And you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. And this brings about the thought of, uh, you know, Jesus helping us to see, and, you know, this was coming back from the Old Testament and, and then made more understood in the ministry of Jesus uh, that we are, we are a temple and that we together are collectively the church, His temple. Uh, and so that we collectively are being built into a spiritual house, but even personally, uh, that God is building in me a spiritual house. And this points back to, you know, that the Holy Spirit lives within us and, you know, to take care of the temple and all those things that we, we understand from Scripture about our own bodies even. Uh, but he says to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And then in verse 6, it's it says this, and... Peter begins to share uh, this passage from Isaiah 28. He says, For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. This passage goes on in just a minute. We'll finish it in just a minute. But, but this passage is helping to paint the picture. Peter is taking this passage from Isaiah 28, uh, and, and he is helping us to see something that I think is important for us. So he'd been talking about us being stones, right? That we're living stones. Uh, but then he brings in this passage that talks about a cornerstone. Well, we know from other scripture and putting this all together that the cornerstone he's talking about is Jesus. And so Jesus being the cornerstone, chosen and precious, he goes on there again in, in uh, verse 6, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So we know that we can trust in Christ. We, we see that. We get that. And then in verse 7, so uh, the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, talking about unbelievers, people who have not trusted in Jesus to be their Savior, uh, for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And, and so uh, the understanding here, and, and this gets into a lot of building stuff, but especially building stuff from back then, is that they would always lay the cornerstone first. And so the cornerstone of the building, uh, which would be laid first, uh, would dictate where everything else was going to go. And so the, the analogy here that's being used is that Christ being the cornerstone of that building, remember going back to we're living stones and all of that, right? Uh, well, he's the cornerstone of that, and wherever he is in our life, that is what lays the trajectory for everything in our lives, just like the cornerstone does in building a building. You know, if you lay it this way or lay it that way, you know, then the building, the walls are going to go this way or they're going to go that way or whichever, you know. Um, and so uh, Peter's trying to help us. He's trying to help us to understand something. He's trying to help us to see, number one, how good the Lord is. And, and he is so, so good, uh, you know, that I, I think that we just miss sometimes just how, how, just how great the Lord is to us. Uh, and, and in seeking him, 
how he quenches our thirst. We see this in other scripture, that he quenches our thirst. He gives us what we need. He gives us what we're looking for. And yet we still, you know, we still kind of fall into that whole like, you know, looking for, you know, happiness in this world and all those things. And Peter's just over here, he's screaming from the rooftops and he's saying, you know, put away, put away all those, put away that sinful heart and long for pure spiritual milk that you yourselves are like living stones to be built up as a spiritual house with the with the cornerstone being Christ himself. So it in a way it's so simple that we're just kind of like, well yeah, you know, we know that. But we know it and don't follow it a lot of times. And I and I think for us to just be reminded, you know, of this truth of of what God is wanting to do in our life is just this huge thing. And, you know, just e- even even just understanding you know, at verse 8, you know, it, it finishes off that part of uh, Isaiah 28. It says, in a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. So that stone of stumbling is a stumble for someone who doesn't believe, but is a rock of offense and foundation for those of us who have believed. And it says, and the honor is for you who believe. There's an honor that the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And so Christ himself was rejected. We, at times, are rejected. And Christ knows exactly what that feels like. He totally understands. And at the end of the day, you know, I I think, you know, it goes on in verse 8, it says, they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. You know, a lot of people have taken that to mean a lot of things. But I think just simply put, I think that that means if they fail to believe, they stumble because they disobey. So if you don't believe and you don't trust, then you're going to stumble, you're going to disobey. Uh, and the destined, pre, you know, the whole part that it's destined to do is that it was that, that was destined to be truth, uh, that if you don't follow the Lord, then you're you're going to stumble. Uh, versus for those of us who believe we have the honor of getting to be one of those living stones. Christ is the, the, the living stone. I mean, above and beyond, you know, why do you say that, Chris? Well, because above and beyond, not only is, did he you know, come and live here, but he defeated death and came back to life. He is the living stone. And we are called as living stones, to be made, to be a part of making up his temple, his church, our temple, our body that we're called to be living stones. And we need his word to grow. Let me say that again. We need his word to grow. And, and we need to grow. You know, we don't want to be stagnant. We we don't want that to be a part of you know what our life is. We it's it's vital to us. Uh, that we, as we live, that we that we're constantly growing. Uh, it's vital to our walk. It's vital for us to not stumble. For us to seek Him in prayer, to seek Him in His Word, to worship Him uh, with others as the church. I mean, it's it's all these are all pieces of the puzzle that God uses in our lives to draw Him closer to Him. In fact, I, I just encourage you if you get a chance, read the rest of chapter two on your own. Uh, and I think you'll be really, really, uh, I think you'll be really encouraged by, by what the Lord has for us uh, in that. Uh, and I encourage you to do that with somebody. Maybe this week you pick out somebody to read that, read the rest of that passage with, talk about it, pray together, uh, seek the Lord and how you might push each other toward him. Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the living stone. He is risen from the dead. We are living stones and we are alive and are able to testify that he is wanting to build his temple within us and with us together, the church. There's this passage that I just couldn't help but read as a part of this message. Uh, And it is this reminder as part of why 
God calls us as living stones, not to just not just to grow and not just become more knowledgeable, but to do something else. And it is this passage that we see in Scripture from the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem in Luke 19. And this is where Jesus comes into town and everybody's cheering for him and all of these things, and they're praising his name and all that. And it says this in verse 37, it says, And as he was drawing near already on the way down, uh, the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, catch this, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. <laughs> they want him to tell them to be quiet. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. The very stones would cry out. And Jesus is saying there that, look, if even if they weren't going to praise my name, the creation itself is going to praise my name because I am the Lord. I mean, and, and, and folks, that's, that's our call. Our call is to glorify Him. Our purpose in this world is to glorify Him. It is to make Him known. It is to make Jesus known is that other people would know Him because they know us. And it leads to Philippians 4.13, which I hear a lot of people use in a lot of different ways. And I want to throw this on the wall and hope that it sticks. It says, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right? We've maybe you've heard that before. Maybe you've heard somebody use that as like a, you know, I, I'm I'm you know nobody can defeat me because Jesus is on my side kind of thing. Uh, let me just help us to understand something. That's not a mantra. You know that is that is truth for our soul. That we need Jesus to live and to grow. We can't do this without Him. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me is helping us to understand that we can't do this life without Christ. It's not, let's bottle up Jesus and make Him what we want Him to be when we want Him to be it. We need Him to be living stones as we have been called to live in this world. We want to grow. We want to grow in Christ. We want to taste and see that the Lord is good. And I think for us today, I think it is important for us to be reminded of the call to proclaim, to make Christ known. Do your people know of Jesus in such ways of the kind of things that they were saying when Jesus came into the city? Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Do your friends and your family know that Jesus is your King I know, I know that sounds a little weird, you know, just the wording of that, because we don't use words like king and things like that a lot of times these days. But I mean, do they know? Do they know that you serve him? Do they know that you love him, that he's changed your life? If we are growing in Christ, if he is using us in this world, if he's been glorified through us, it is because we are living stones a part of that temple that God has called us to be, to make Him known in this world. I'm praying that if you don't know Him as your Savior, that you would no longer stumble, as it talks about there, but that you would trust in Him, believe in Him to be everything that He wants to be in your life to change you. Let Him lead you. For those of us that are believers, may we be those living stones that God has called us to be, that others would know Christ, that we would be growing in Him and not stagnant, but following Him, seeking Him, letting Him work in us and change us as the people He's called us to be. Let's pray together. God, thank You so much for Your Word. and God, I, I pray that uh, it would guide us and it would help us to follow You. God, we need Your help to follow You. We, we oftentimes just don't know even what to do, but Lord, you, you know how to lead us. And God, we just pray Lord, that we would trust in you for that, to follow you and seek you. God, I pray that you would do that. Uh, for anyone that's listening to this, God, I pray, Lord, that you would help them to believe if they're struggling to believe. But God, I pray that you would just do that work in their heart. God, and that it would be just so obvious, Lord, that you're speaking to their hearts. Uh, Lord, help them to believe, help them to trust, help them to know that you love them, you care for them, and you sent Jesus to die 
uh, in, in their place to take the take the death for the sin that, that we deserve, the death that we deserve for our sin. Uh, God, I pray, Lord, that they would trust in that today. God, work in that. God, thank you for your son. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, that you are allowing and, and asking and calling us to be living stones. Uh, God, may we be alive, Lord, for your name. Uh, we ask this in your son's name. Amen. So we just heard uh, an amazing message because God's word is always amazing. It is applicable to every part of our life. And I want to invite you now to respond uh, in whatever way that you might need to respond. And so the, the first question I always like to ask when we come to response time is just, what is God saying to you right now? And so just think about that for a second. What is the Spirit of God saying to me right now? And then as he maybe whispers something uh, to your mind, um, uh, you know, I just want to ask, is there anything that you need to do about what he's saying to you? Is there a, a sin that you need to repent of? Is, is there fresh faith that you need to have in Jesus? Um, is there someone that you need to talk to as a result of what you heard today? Do you, were you inspired by what you heard? And you're like, I need to go read that scripture more and really dig in because what Chris was saying is really resonating with my heart, and I need to understand more about that. Whatever it is, I want to encourage you with, with the Holy Spirit's help to respond appropriately. And then I also want to ask this question. Um, do you know for sure that you are Christian? None of us are born knowing Jesus. We, we may grow up in a religious home. We may grow up in a home where we attend church all the time. But to be a Christian is actually to have uh, a time in your life where you personally say, I need Jesus for me. Like I need him to forgive my sin personally. And I need him to come into my life, forgive me of my sin and, and be my Lord and Savior. He may be your mom's or your dad's Lord and Savior, but you say, I need him to be my Lord and Savior. And so if you've never had that experience, I want to tell you about it just for a second and, and then invite you to respond uh, if that is, is, is what you're feeling today. And the easiest way I know how to explain it is just to explain uh, Romans 10.9. And Romans 10.9 says this. It says, if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, Lord means boss, owner, ruler. So we confess that, that Jesus is now the boss of me. He's calling the shots for me. And the second part of the verse says, and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. So in other words, we believe the message about what Jesus has done for us. We believe that he died on the cross so that our sin can be forgiven and he rose again to give us new life. If we, if we are, are willing to say Jesus is now the boss, and I need what he did for me on that cross and resurrection. I need that to apply to my account. If you're ready, if you believe that and you're ready to ask him to come into your life, it's that simple. And you can ask him uh, a, with a prayer and a prayer doesn't have to be fancy, but just in your own words say, Jesus, I need you to forgive me for my sin and come into my life and change me. And, and that's what it means to become a Christian. And the Bible says this, it says, if anyone is in Christ, He's a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. And so if you believe today for the very first time and ask Christ to come into your life, you, your life will be changed. You'll be a new creation. And so if you need to make that decision today, I want to I encourage you to do that. Uh, and if you have additional questions or you need some counsel, you'd like to chat about these things, uh, we would love to help with that too. You can go uh, to our website, 24church.com, or you can go to our Facebook page. And both of them, in both of those places, you can see a Facebook Messenger icon. And if you click on it, you can, uh, you can chat with a pastor. We're standing by. We would love to answer any questions that you might have or help you further, especially about anything, but especially if you're considering uh, becoming a Christian today. And so uh, as you think about these things, let me pray for us and, and ask God to help us as we think about these decisions. Father, I do pray that if anyone is listening, Father, and they don't yet know you, 
Maybe they know about you. Maybe, they, maybe they've been around you. They've been around believers and been even in the presence of God, but they, they've never known you for themselves. There hasn't been that time for them. I pray that you would draw them to yourself right now. I pray that you would help them to have faith and to know that the God who created everything loves them and that Jesus loves them and, and wants to come into their life. And so, Father, would you save people this morning? Would you, would you uh, adopt them into the family of God? And, Father, for all the believers that are watching, Lord, if you're convicting them of anything, encouraging them to do anything, Lord, uh, help us all to respond to whatever you're saying to us. And, Lord, I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
So before we hop out of here, let me tell you about a couple things going on in the life of 24. Um, the, the big one that I think most of you know about, but in case you don't, is that we are meeting in person. We have this uh, online service that debuts every week, but we also are gathering every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and at 10.30 a.m. Uh, for worship, and we're doing it in a safe way. We're social distance. We're sanitizing the crud out of everything uh, and just and just having a bunch of fun together. Uh, but we're not meeting at our building because our building is still under construction. And so we are down the street at Pleasant View uh, Christian School. They've been so gracious to allow us to worship and meet there. Um, and we would love for you to, to worship with us in person. We're going to continue doing this every week until we're we're back in our building. Uh, if you are interested in worshiping, worshiping with us next week in person, I want to encourage you to go to our homepage and if you scroll near the bottom of the page, all the current announcements are there. And you can, you, it, there's one that says Worship With Us at Pleasant View Christian School. You can click on that event and you can register and just let us know you're coming. And again, that helps us to keep our numbers safe and to know that you're showing up. So uh, please, if you're so inclined, worship with us in person. We would love that. We would love to get to know you if we don't. Uh, the second thing that I want you to know about is the big food truck. Now, the big food truck is coming up this Friday. Uh, uh, October 23rd. And what the big food truck is, is that we, through a grant, get a huge, like 18 wheeler tractor trailer full of food and groceries. And we get to give all those out to the community. We love this event. We love to meet people where they are and, uh, and just help feed them in this case. And we need lots of volunteers to make this event happen. So if that sounds like something you would love to do, I want to encourage you to sign up. We need people to help unload the truck, organize the food before the people get here to receive it. We need people as they're coming through to pray with them and get their information. Uh, whether you're kind of shy person or very outgoing, there's a place for you to serve for this event and we need your help. So this is on a Friday, it's Friday, October 23rd, but if you can make it on a Friday during the day, I know a lot of us are working, but if you're not or you can get off, please sign up for the Big Food Truck, come and help. This is gonna be a fantastic event. It all takes place here in our parking lot at 24 Church. Uh, and so I wanna encourage you to go sign up for that event again at 24church.com. That's pretty much it as far as announcements this week. I always like to end our time together with a benediction. And so I'm gonna read from uh, Colossians today. Man, this is an amazing passage. And, and let's receive these words together as we're dismissed from worship. And it says this in Colossians 1, it says, and it's talking about Jesus. It says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him, all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. So Jesus is preeminent. He's the one. Oh, thank you so much for worshiping with this family. We love you. We'll see you next week.